Welcome to the fifth installment of the Boeing 777 APU series. In the previous chapter, we understood how the APU is critical in performing an emergency landing when the aircraft suffers dual engine failure. In the final part, we'll explore the cooling, noise reduction, lubrication and protection systems that optimize APU engine performance. The APU is located in the tail cone section behind the aft pressure bulkhead of the aircraft. The unpressurized area is not environmentally controlled by the air conditioning system. When the APU is running, the heat produced by the engine increases the temperature in the enclosed compartment. High temperatures can affect the service life of the engine and its components. To counter this, the APU is equipped with a compartment cooling system. The inlet duct that provides air for the engine and the load compressor operation has a vent for compartment cooling. The vent allows the outside air to enter the APU compartment. To maintain a continuous flow, the APU exhaust has an adductor. The adductor has no moving parts and works on the venturi effect. The high-speed flow of the exhaust gases through the constricted section increases the velocity and decreases the pressure. This creates a low pressure zone inside the exhaust duct compared to the APU compartment pressure. The differential pressure creates suction and pulls the compartment air. The air then gets mixed with the exhaust flow and vacates the aircraft through the exhaust duct. The continuous circulation of airflow reduces the heat in the APU compartment. The APU exhaust duct, along with sending the hot gases overboard, also reduces the exhaust noise levels. The gas turbine engine operation is extremely loud, and to decrease the noise level, the exhaust duct is fitted with a muffler. The muffler is designed with a perforated tube, a heat shield, and a high-temperature acoustic material. The sound waves pass through the perforated tube and into the acoustic material. The acoustic material absorbs the sound waves and reduces the intensity of the exhaust flow noise. Now let's look at the lubrication system. The engine oil system has three main components, the oil reservoir, the oil pump, and the heat exchanger. The oil pump is driven by the engine gearbox and has two parts, one for lubrication and the other for scavenging. The lube pump element draws high temperature oil from the reservoir. The pump pressurizes the oil and sends it to the heat exchanger. The airflow used for APU compartment cooling is also used to cool the engine oil. Before entering the exhaust duct, the compartment air flows through the heat exchanger and cools the engine oil. From the heat exchanger, the oil flows back to the lube pump. The lube element then filters the oil and transfers it for lubricating and cooling the engine components. The lubrication oil is supplied to the APU generator, the engine gearbox. After lubrication, the hot oil from the gearbox section directly returns to the oil reservoir. The lube pump also supplies oil to the three engine bearing compartments, the load compressor bearings, the mid-frame bearings, and the turbine bearings. After lubrication, the hot oil from the bearing compartment gets collected in the engine sump. The scavenge pump draws the hot oil from the turbine bearing compartment. the mid-frame bearing compartment, and the load compressor bearing compartment. The scavenge pump also collects the hot oil from the APU generator. The pump then returns the collected oil to the reservoir. In addition to starting and controlling the engine, the APU controller monitors for several engine failures. The controller will perform an automatic shutdown to protect the engine. Automatic shutdown is performed if any one of the following conditions is true. Failure in the internal circuit of the controller. The air inlet door closes when the engine is operating. Surge control failure that leads to load compressor reverse flow. High oil temperature that fails to cool the engine parts effectively. Oil pump failure that results in insufficient oil pressure for lubricating the engine components. The speed of the engine drops drastically below the operating speed. The engine goes beyond its maximum operating speed. High exhaust gas temperature data from the sensors. 
when there is an APU compartment fire. Let's select the fire condition to understand the automatic shutdown feature. The fire is detected with the help of three fire detectors in the APU compartment. The detector's outer body provides the electrical ground. Inside the body of the detector is a thermistor core. An electrical conductor runs through the thermistor. The conductors are connected to form a loop. When there is a fire, the thermistor temperature increases. This changes the resistance of the conductor loop with respect to the ground. The resistance of the loop is measured by the APU fire detection computer. When the resistance drops below the threshold, the computer gives a fire signal to several aircraft systems. The fire computer also determines the mode of APU operation. When the aircraft is in the air or one of the main engines is running, the APU is considered to be in the attended mode. When the aircraft is on the ground and both engines are off, the APU is in the unattended mode. In attended mode, the fire detection will cause automatic shutdown of the APU, but the fire extinguisher has to be operated manually. In unattended mode, fire will lead to automatic shutdown of the APU and automatic operation of the fire extinguisher. Since the aircraft is currently on the ground and the main engines are not running, the APU is in the unattended mode. In both APU modes, the fire computer with the help of the warning electronics unit will give visual and oral fire warnings in the cockpit. Since the aircraft is on the ground, a signal is also given on the nose landing gear service panel. APU fire warning is necessary outside of the aircraft, especially during maintenance work, as the cockpit is not always occupied by the maintenance crew. The maintenance personnel can manually shut down the APU and discharge the fire extinguisher by using the service panel without the need to enter the cockpit. If the maintenance crew is in the cockpit during the fire warning, they can shut down the APU by pulling the fire handle out and rotating it for extinguisher discharge. The manual procedure is a backup and is only necessary when the automatic system fails. For automatic operation, the fire computer sends a signal to the electrical load management system to help stop the APU. Simultaneously, the APU controller will receive the shutdown command. In automatic shutdown, there will be no cooldown period for the APU engine. The controller will immediately close the bleed valve, disconnect the generator, and cut the fuel supply to stop the engine. As the APU generator is disconnected, the electrical load management system will use the standby power provided by the main battery. The load management system will stop the fuel supply to the APU from the fuel tank and close the air inlet door. A titanium firewall isolates the APU compartment from the rest of the aircraft. The APU fire extinguishing bottle is in the stabilizer compartment. Squib, pressure switch, and fire extinguishing agent are part of the fire bottle. The squib is a miniature explosive device. To operate the extinguisher, the fire computer applies an electric current to the squib circuit. The squib mechanism ruptures the diaphragm of the fire bottle, which allows the pressurized agent to travel to the APU compartment and extinguish the fire. As the bottle pressure drops to zero, the pressure switch closes and the discharge indicator comes on. Once the fire is extinguished, the temperature of the fire detector core decreases and the loop resistance increases. The fire computer removes the fire warning signal. That's all from the Boeing 777 APU series. Thanks for watching.